my name is Doris Valencia and I am here to present to you our nuclear bomb project for my chemistry two class. I'm going to show you my PowerPoint presentation. By the end of this presentation, you will learn what is nuclear fission, what is nuclear fusion, and how do nuclear bombs work. First, let's start with the basics. At the center of every atom, there is a nucleus. Breaking or mixing two nuclei together can release a vast amount of energy. Nuclear weapons use this kind of energy to create dangerous explosions. At the center of each atom where neutrons and protons are very tightly together, most of them are very stable molecules. During fission, the nuclei of heavy atoms split into smaller, lighter pieces, releasing tons of energy. This can be a spontaneous phenomenon or induced. Here we have a visual representation of what fission is. Basically, we have heavy split atoms, which are turned into smaller, lighter pieces. This process causes a lot of energy. During this process, the neutrons are released and this therefore causes a chain reaction. However, fusion works differently compared to fission. During fusion, we have lightweight nuclei which fuse together to form heavier nuclei when they are exposed to very high temperatures and pressures. Only some isotopes of certain elements can undergo fission. An example of isotopes used in nuclear weapons are plutonium-239 and uranium-235. Here we have a visual representation of two small atoms fusing together into one large atom and this causes large amount of energy. Modern nuclear weapons use both fission and fusion. Critical mass is important to know this term because it's the minimum amount of nuclear material needed to maintain fission. Modern nuclear weapons work quite differently because instead of colliding to subcritical pieces of nuclear fuel, these new weapons, they use chemical explosives around subcritical sphere of uranium-235 or plutonium-239 metal. This force from the blast is directly inward, compressing the pit and bringing its atoms closer together. Um, once it's dense enough, the neutrons are injected, initiating fission re chain reaction and producing an atomic explosion. Uranium is a mineral that is used for the creation of nuclear bombs. Uranium can be found all throughout the world. However, less than 1% of natural uranium contains the isotope of uranium-235, which is the one used for the production of nuclear weapons. Uh, to be able to find uranium-235, it has to go through a separation process 
using centrifuges and uh, basically lots of steaming machines to extract this isotope. This is very costly and ineffective procedure. Uh, it takes a lot of time. So therefore they tend to use plutonium. Plutonium on the other hand is very scarce. It only occurs in natural plutonium in very small trace amounts. However, it can be produced as a fission byproduct in nuclear reactors. It can be separated by a process called reprocessing. And this process is a lot easier and cost effective. So um, basically they have, um, they don't remove the isotopes. It's just, it remains the same element. However, this is a very radioactive process, which requires a lot of shielding and protection from the facilities in order to handle this radioactive element. Fusion weapons are also known as thermonuclear or hydrogen weapons. During the creation of this, thermonuclear weapons, the hydrogen isotopes fuse together. This phenomenon causes energy to be released by the weapon, creating a fireball that reaches several tens of million degrees. Temperatures pretty much close as being in the center of the sun. Here we see an example of a thermonuclear weapon. Basically on the inside we have therefore now we conclude the structure of the atom contains a nucleus which has proton and neutrons inside. We learned as well that fission is the process in which atoms split into smaller nuclei and large amount of energy is released through this process. It can occur spontaneously or induced. We also learn the meaning of fusion and how fusion takes a lightweight nuclei and fuses together to form heavier nuclei. We learned that only some isotopes can undergo fission, and these isotopes are plutonium-239 and uranium-235. It is important to remember that modern nuclear weapons work differently compared to critical mass needed to maintain fission. Also, we reviewed what thermonuclear weapons are. We reviewed the structure of it and the composition. I hope that my presentation was helpful and thank you for your time.